And then here comes the segment that we're all talking about. MJF makes his entrance with Wardlow. I will say that Wardlow needs to dress more like an upscale bodyguard. Remember, he used to have the suit. Now yeah. he's got a muscle shirt on and some jeans. Uh, let's, yeah, the Burberry scarf guy, right, would have somebody dressing. But anyway, let's go over this. And a lot of people are going to think, oh, how the fuck is he going to knock this? This should be something that Cornette would have creamed over. And it was fantastic on a couple of different people's parts. And it also highlights that sometimes I don't see what was, I see what could have been, right? That's where sometimes I get sideways with people. I'm going to tell you what was. Here's what happened. MJF came out and did not only his usual great promo, but he had extra venom. He had extra confidence. He was trying extra hard to restore his credibility, to get some of his heat back, as we used to say. He was prepared for this. He wanted those people to revile him. He knocked Skyline Chili for God, in Cincinnati, for God's sake. You don't want to do that and walk the streets afterwards. It is the shits, by the way. We've got, I can't stand it, but. And there's a new word, Brian. Is, a, a mid is the new word, right? It's like you're in the middle or what I missed. It was the first time I had heard it used in that manner, but I don't know if it's something that's happening somewhere it's, else. Well, he was kept saying it like it's got to be hip with the kids. I thought he made it like the third, the second or third time he did it, it kind of worked. And then he yeah. moved on. So he didn't stick with it, which was the right thing. Well, but he, he got it. He got it over. It's something that was derogatory. But anyway, he called the people into the ring. Why don't you come in the ring and try to do something about it? Oh, you can't because you're cowards. He knocked Linda Pillman. And he knocked the the uh, pregnant uh, daughter of Brian Pillman Sr., Brian Pillman Jr.'s sister that's there at at the uh, at the railing in the front row that has been referred to earlier by CM Punk. And since they're in Cincinnati, it made sense. This was not out of place at all. It, it wasn't a screen door on a submarine. This made sense for those people to be there. He let her speak and let her say something very smug, and then he started to fire back and that's when brian pillman jr's music played and brian came out onto the the ramp or the stage the entranceway area had a microphone brian did a great job on his promo he was in the spotlight for once he had put some bass in his voice just like you could tell that this was mjf's material i think that's obvious nobody wrote that for mjf it sounded like something that no one Brian Pillman that Brian Pillman would say, and it was very Cincinnati centric. And it he seemed so he came up with this this verbiage also. <clears throat> and of course, then MJF fires back and calls his mother Methany Pillman. <laughs> wow. That was good. Come on. <laughs> wow. And Pillman hits the ring, but there's Wardlow, and Wardlow stops him. MJF's reaction. To Pillman hitting the ring was great too. Just yeah, instant yeah. fear and then Wardlow jumping in front. Yeah, yeah. And then MJF basically proceeded to eviscerate Brian further, told him his mother forgot to swallow. And where Brian bowed up again, but he got backed up by Wardlow. But MJF then tells Wardlow, he basically tells him off. He said, what, are you going to protect me like you did the other night? Go stand in the corner and let me handle this. You see the look on oh. Wardlow's face. No, it was even better. Go stand in the corner and look pretty. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and so then MJF and Brian Pillman got face to face. And finally, MJF hits a line where, you know, he should have done, or his mother should have done what he was supposed to a long time ago. Basically, abort you is what your mother should have done. And that's when Pillman double legs him and starts the ground and pound. And Wardlow knows it's going on, but he's in the corner with his back to it. And finally, he reluctantly turns around and pulls Brian off. But Brian bounces right in back again. So he pulls him off and suplexes him again. And then here comes Griff Garrison. And fucking got clotheslined out of his boots, and MJF nailed him with the ring. And Pillman tries to cover up Griff. 
and the heels left. It was a great segment by MJF and by Brian Pillman Jr. It was a great segment for this television program in general, one of the better things they've done. Would you like now for me to tell you what I saw, what could have been? Yeah, I'm very curious. Because let's, <clears throat> let me ask you a couple questions. Number one, we agree that nobody wrote this material for MJF. It had to be him. He came up with the material. He was allowed to do a promo on this television by the booker, but he was saying what he came up with. I don't know for certain, but I would think that's a safe bet. Yeah, it's a safe bet. And the reason why that they wanted to allow MJF to go so far <laughs> with his verbiage was to get heat on him, to redeem him after losing the program with Jericho. Whether you like the program or not, he lost in the end. So this is his chance to get some heat back and to redeem himself in, in, in that way. Correct? I think that's a part of it. It's what he's doing next. But also, you, you know, like we talked about you with the last stampede. He had, you would think, a lot of heat taken off him. How do you right. get him going coming out of that? How do you get some more heat on? And also, Brian Pillman Jr., we mentioned that they lost a golden opportunity when the original broadcast aired of the Dark Side of the Ring episode on his father. He came off as a very sympathetic figure. So now, since the second part of season three of Dark Side is going to premiere again, they're going to be running those shows over and over. You know, Vice does that. So, with the exception of when it actually originally happened, this is probably the most opportune time to break Brian Pillman loose into something where he can be involved and get a chance to speak and get more notoriety as well. We understand all these things are are understood, right? We need to get some heat on Pill on uh, MJF. We need to feature Pillman. We need to redeem some of the things that's gone on before with them. And also this is supposed to look like the, that MJF by the nature of this verbiage went too far, even for him, even for us on our program, on this network, this is gone. This is, he's going into business for himself. That's the, the vibe they were trying to give. Right. I don't know about the last part because I don't know if the vibe was MJF's going too far or just MJF's being MJF. Well, it was because Tony Schiavone called them a prick the same way he always yes, does. But I'm just saying the whole idea is that the, the, the re, he made Brian Pillman mad enough to tackle him and they're having a fight and yes, he said horrible yes. things about the guy's mother and we're supposed to be into this, right? They're not working together. Correct. So here's what the problem is. You can, if you're an inexperienced booker or whoever's producing this stuff overall, you can have individual great performances by the talent, and then you can still do them a disservice by not allowing them to paint the entire picture, including things that they're not responsible for or don't have the say over. They're painting a great picture of the main characters in this portrait here, but they're not filling in the background. And if they just stop and think, okay, got this guy going to say these horribly pointed things, the personal things to this guy. We want the people to be behind the baby face, the hometown hero, and feel like that he's competent. He's going to do something about this. He's standing up to these people. He's not just being punked out. We want everybody in the right place. We want the heat to go on MJF instead of somebody clearing him saying these things on the air, right? We want to make this a shoot. So you do the same thing. You have MJF come out and do his entrance with Wardlow. And he starts cutting that promo and he knocks everybody that he did. And then he sees the Pillmans at ringside. And he gets down and he goes over in front of them. And it looked to me like that the reason why he let Brian Pillman's senior's daughter speak, the sister there, the pregnant sister, so that everybody would make sure they knew who she was and that he could say, she could say something and then he could start knocking her again. But when he turned the microphone over to her and let her say something, in my mind, not only was she too well prepared for an amateur, but it's not something that a prick like that would do, give her an opportunity to speak. Instead, he would have said, look at here, everybody, right next to 
old Linda Pillman, you know, the woman that passes for Mother Teresa in Cincinnati, this redneck town? You got another member of the family. Look at this one, Brian Pillman Sr.'s daughter. I can see that she's a chip off the old block. She's the next star of 16 and pregnant. You don't give the victim a chance to speak. You identify the participants. He's still talking. <clears throat> and once he says that, you don't play Brian Pillman's music and you don't have him come out on the stage with a microphone smiling and answering what's been said. You have Brian Pillman stalking down the, the stage, the ramp, whatever they've got, the entranceway, followed by two or three referees trying to stay. Hey, hey, come on now, Brian, don't do that. And he goes right all the way around to the floor where his family is. And that's when MJF and Wardlow get back in the ring. And Brian is standing in front of his family members. And that's when MJF continues. And the referees are on the floor trying to tell Brian, don't start this. And you know how he is. It's not worth it. And that's when Brian Pillman gets one of the 18 interviewers that they've got around with microphones, Justin Roberts or Barb Brady or the girl or whoever else, give me that microphone. And that's when Brian starts talking back to him and does the promo that he already did on the stage. But now he's down there in front of his family and he's talking to the guys in the ring. And then MJF says the same thing and calls his mother Methany. And that's when Brian Pillman jumps up on the goddamn apron and the referees are trying to hold him back because he doesn't, they don't want him to get in the ring with Wardlow and et cetera. When he got in the ring with Wardlow and went face to face and backed up after his mother had be already been called into his her morals called into question, that created a bad subliminal impression. He should not have been stopped and backed up by, well, yes, I know Wardlow's the, the bigger guy and the muscle, so don't create the confrontation. Don't make them that close to whereas Brian Pillman, because some guys in on the wrong side of Cincinnati would have already heard some fighting words and are so, saying to Brian Pillman, is he ever going to slap one of these motherfuckers? Keep them apart a little longer. Like I said, you're painting the main characters, but you're not filling in the background. Now you've got fucking a few of the referees, maybe a security guy, one of the ring announcers. Brian Pillman's on the apron of the ring. They're trying to talk to him, holding on to his pant leg. MJF and Wardlow are in the ring. They're continuing the same verbiage they did. And then finally, instead of... When you've told Brian Pillman that your mother forgot to swallow him and he didn't just slap Wardlow, you're, you've done wrong here. The forgot to swallow should have been where Brian starts to go through the ropes and everybody gets their hands on him. And I know they want to still illustrate that the, the program they were starting before where Wardlow is a reluctant servant of MJFs and doesn't like him either, a time for will come for that. Keith Richards, that's a great guitar lick, but it doesn't fit this song, so we're going to save that for the next hit we write, and we're going to concentrate on this. He didn't need to create a reason to tell Wardlow to turn his back so he can get his ass kicked in this situation. As soon as your mom forgot to swallow, that's when Brian should have started trying to get in the ring, and that's when fucking... MJF should have said, yeah, but that's be because she didn't abort you. And then I've seen him do it. Brian does the springboard that his dad used to do into the cross body over the top of Wardlow in the ring onto fucking MJF, breaking loose of all the other people that were trying to stop him. And that's where he ground and pounds him. And goddamn, the other guys come in and they're trying to stop Wardlow from peeling fucking uh, 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 Pillman off of MJF. And but finally he does, and boom, and there's some now here Tony Khan. If ever there was a place for Tony Khan, as soon as somebody on his television show said your mother should have aborted you, that would be where he'd be coming down the fucking aisleway, trailing a goddamn headset and a fucking thing that used to be plugged into something, waving his fucking arms like, no, oh, we're gonna get kicked off television. And this fight's going on, and finally Wardlow peels MJF off. And of course, now Griff Garrison can come in and Griff Garrison gets clothesline and hit with the fucking ring. 
but you needed to create more chaos, make a shoot out of it. It's unplanned. If it was planned, it's gone too far. It's gotten out of control. Everybody's playing a part in this. Instead of just giving the stage to these people and letting them do a sports entertainment skit, even though they did it well, there's little details that you can throw in that makes it look more like it's happening on an impromptu basis and somebody or more than one person got a little bit carried away. That's the atmosphere you're trying to create. Instead of, of leaving Brian Pillman kneeling over his partner who looks like Pippi Longstocking, the more I <laughs> see him, just looks like a fucking teenage girl with a bad haircut. Oh, come on. Brian is kneeling next to him, and the heels just walk off. And then finally, as soon as the heels have walked off, then a doctor and a couple of referees are there to help Griff roll out. It just, that's the part of, that's the things that made it look like a wrestling sketch instead of an unfolding situation that we don't want to see happen. Does that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense. I'll just say I loved it. However, what you just said would have made it better, although I didn't have a problem with the sister getting on the mic in that moment because MJF was just going to insult her. Um, but she I, was, too, she was, too, she had I didn't think so. prepared. I didn't think she was, I thought she seemed like, you know, mm. I mean, she was pregnant, so I can't, so she wasn't, but she just seemed like a drunk woman in the crowd who, you know, was ready to say who the fuck she thought she was. I completely agree with you about in the middle of all this, and they already established who Linda Pillman was because Punk pointed her out earlier in the show. Right. And MJF's going at it with her, and they established that it's Brian Pillman's daughter and his grandson or his grandbaby. I forget if it was a son or a daughter she was going to have. They establish all that. Why the fuck is he coming out, Pillman Jr., with his music? W whatever that was, I don't right. think it was Welcome to the Jungle. It was some bootleg Welcome to the Jungle. And then at one point he said Welcome to the Jungle, so I don't know what the fuck. That, you're right. He should have just hit the ring because he's fucking ready to go take care of this, and I agree with your other point. Wardlow shouldn't stop him. It, it, emasculated shouldn't, it shouldn't be smart. He's a baby face. He should want to go out there and fight with his heart. It should be a stupid thing that he would get his ass kicked by Wardlow for doing it, but that's what he should do. There were so many hard personal zingers that I felt like that they didn't give enough pre-thought and planning to my God, when you've just said that to this guy, we know there's more material to come, but how can anything be worse than that? And wouldn't that provoke a violent response? They, they, there needed to be more moving parts. There needed to be more effort to keep these people uh, apart from each other. There needed to be more effort to make it look like we're not just doing all this stuff in the ring anymore and everybody's cooperating. There's people trying to get you to stop. We're going too long on live TV. We're saying things that shouldn't be said. This language hasn't been approved. Whatever the case, that's why I'm saying I, I'm not knocking this thing. I loved MJF's performance, and I thought Pillman did great. But I'm saying you could have, if somebody, and, and like, if Tony Khan says, okay, you guys got five minutes for this segment, go out and MJF, you say all that really stiff stuff to him, and then Brian, you do this. If he told him, okay. They've maybe worked this stuff out amongst themselves, but does MJF have the power? Or does Brian Pillman have the power to say, well, I'd like to requisition three referees, two security guards, the ringside doctor, and Tony, you need to come down on this. He can't say that. That's the duty of the booker or whoever the authority is over the show to say, okay, look at what these guys are going to do. How can we make this better? How can we augment it? How can we give them the the background they need uh, in this picture that they're painting. How can we make it look as convincing or as legitimate as possible? How can it make the maximum impact? How do we not make Brian Pillman look weak for not attacking this loudmouth motherfucker before he does? Do we, how do we create the space? How do we keep everybody busy? Those are things that... it. it you go over ahead of time. Every TV that I've ever produced or been in charge of, you try to think about these things ahead of time and what everybody's reaction would be and where they're going to be in the fucking thing. How close are they going to be? 
sometimes if you're 10 feet away from somebody, things go fine. And sometimes if you do the exact same thing, but you're right next to each other, it's fucked the whole thing up. And it just, that's what needs to be fleshed out on some of these, especially this. They had the chance in the kid's hometown, MJF's verbal ability, the ability to say things like that on national television. If they'd have thought outside the typical wrestling sports entertainment sketch type of thing where, okay, and then his music plays and out he comes and he talks in this microphone he's magically gotten. The thing that registers with all the fans is, well, you can't give a better example. The thing that registers with every wrestling fan of any company is shit that they see that they're not supposed to see or is not supposed to happen. All these new debuts? Holy shit, we didn't think we were going to see fucking Brian Danielson in AEW. That's what gets over. Shocks, surprises, things they know are real. And things that you can make them believe there's something to. There was an opportunity here to make this look really legitimate, and they just didn't think it through. But they're trying. And the thing about the referees, I completely agree with. The only problem is you need someone, and it can't be QT Marshall, we've learned, to make sure that for the rest of the show, and quite frankly, for any other show, anyone else who doesn't run in like that, that should be the case. Referees tailing behind them. There should be some consistency. Hey, you can ask all the referees. A lot of these guys, Paul Turner was there. I never had to deal with that idiot corpse referee, but Paul Turner and some of these other guys, they worked for me with Ring of Honor or different places, TNA. I would always not only call everybody that was involved in a segment from the announcer that was going to hand a microphone off to referees or security guys that were just going to run around and wave their arms. And I would not only let them know that they were supposed to go, but when they were supposed to go, what they were supposed to look for before they went, how the timing was supposed to be staggered so that they didn't all show up in a clump and, and what their demeanor was and what they were trying to, I would even assign, you're going to be going to so-and-so you're going to be over there with so-and-so you're going to be checking with so-and-so. So everybody knew. And I would explain the mindset that we were trying to create in the fans' minds. We want people to think this is chaos. It's gone off the rails. You're worried. You're concerned about this. Your problem is that, whatever, and and let them know how to think about the position they were in so when they went out there, their reactions, their facials would be as natural as possible and, and fit the picture. And it, those are details. And if you're playing with the big boys... You got to learn to pay attention to the details. Go ahead. Two more quick things, and then we have to move on. Uh, yes, next we thing. will. But I'm not sure what I think about the idea they're, for the second year in a row, teasing Wardlow MJF dissension. I don't know if that should be MJF's next program. I don't think it should be. Oh, I think, good Lord, no. Yeah, so I'm not sure. If this is going to be just something they tease on and off for years. I don't know how I feel about that. But the other thing I was going to say is... There was a chance for everybody would forgotten about it because it's been months since anything was done with it. So they could have got out of it, but now they brought it up again. You're right. We're about to have a very interesting moment, I think, based on my knowledge of Long Island and Nassau County. AEW is coming to Long Island. There's a chance for the very first time, and I actually think it will happen, MJF <laughs> is going to be a babyface. Because those people in New York love pricks anyway. He's from Plainview. They're going to introduce a kid from Long Island on Long Island. It's going to be interesting. I wonder, I think he's going to get over as a big baby face on the island. It's going to be interesting what happens. Do you think there's any way he can turn him? He uh, can't come out there and say, you know, I did that in Philadelphia one night when I used to go out and introduce the Midnight Express. I said the same thing I'd been saying for the previous two or three weeks. You got to be the ugliest, rottenest bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. And they went, yeah, we suck. Fuck yeah. Fuck us. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. I don't know how it'll go, but I think it'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. That's in a few weeks. But there were things that could have been done like you pointed out. And you had great points there to improve it. But I think MJF did great. I think Pillman Jr., yeah. for someone who isn't very experienced doing angles, did relatively good too although he's got to stop calling mjf maxwell jacob friedman he did it in yeah. two different promos he said his whole name 